Hello and welcome back to Piggy Board Gamer. My name is Exorakos and today I will teach you Pioneer Rails designed by Matthew Dunstan and Jeffrey Allers. This is a flip and write game which you can play all by yourself or with another 80 people simultaneously and it will only take you about an hour. Let's move to the table and see how this game is played. At first, give each player one playing sheet and one pencil. These sheets are double-sided, all players must decide in advance which same side they will use during the game. Then, choose a player at random to be the starting player and give that player the dealer chip. The rest of the player turn order is determined clockwise. Important, in a three-player game only, like in our case here, the third player in the order writes a plus two in the box with the question marks in the bottom right corner of the sheet. These are bonus victory points for that player only. Then take the goal cards and separate them according to their type. Then shuffle each stack separately and randomly pick one card from each stack. Place these cards in the middle of the table and the remaining cards are returned in the box. Then take the playing cards of the game. These are similar to normal playing cards featuring four suit but only with values from 10 to ace. Shuffle these playing cards and place the deck next to the dealer. The game is now ready to start. At this point, I would like to pause for a second to ask you that if you like my videos, please subscribe if you haven't done already. More than 90% of this channel's viewers have not yet subscribed. Subscribing is the major way to support a channel and make it grow. Of course, you can also visit my Patreon page that you can find in the comment section. The game is played over four rounds and each round consists of five turns. At the beginning of every turn, the dealer deals three cards facing upwards in the middle of the table. Then, the dealer chooses one of the cards to use during that turn. Then, all other players will choose one of the remaining cards but without taking it, meaning that multiple players can make use of the same card but not the card that was taken by the dealer. After all players have made a choice, all players act simultaneously and use their selected card. When they're done, all cards are discarded and the turn ends. The dealer chip and the deck of cards are passed to the next clockwise player and the next turn begins. After five such turns, the round comes to an end and there is a small process that I will explain. At the end of the fourth round, the game ends and players move on to scoring. Now we'll explain how players can use their selected card for the turn. First, players write the value of their selected card in the corresponding turn box in the bottom of their sheet. There are five boxes for each one of the rounds, so in the first turn of the first round, the queen symbol must be written in the first box here. So by the end of the round, the five boxes will determine the player's hand, and according to this hand, player will be granted victory points. The second part of the card is the suit. For every suit, there is a corresponding station on the sheet. On every turn, players will be placing three new tracks extending the railways of the corresponding station. In our example, this player will extend the spade station, placing three tracks. Let's see how these can be placed. You create a track by drawing a line on a hexagon's edge. This line, however, must connect to either the station or to a railway of this station. Currently, there is no railway, so our first track must connect to one of the station's corners. You can never cross an edge that goes through a mountain or over the river. So we are left only with five options for our first track. We have just created our first railway. For our second track, we can start a new railway that starts from the spade station or extend our first one. Let's extend our first railway. Important, you can never branch your railways. 
So, I could not place my third track here. I will choose to create a new railway with my third track. As you can see, there are towns scattered in some of the hexagon's corners. Once a railway reaches such a town, then that railway cannot continue any further. Important, you can never connect two different railways. Railways can only meet on town corners. In this situation, both of the railways cannot be extended any further. If I chose another spades card, I would have to create a new railway from the station. Except than towns, there are several other features displayed on the map. All of these features depict an icon in the top of the hex. We have saloons, cattle ranches, forts, mines, banks and rail yards. By placing tracks on the edges of these feature hexes, you activate them and gain various benefits. As you can see, most of the feature hexes depict a number in their bottom part. This number indicates the number of the hex's edges that must contain a track in order for the feature to be activated. So, as soon as I place one track here, I activate this gold mine. After you activate a feature hex, you cross out the illustration in the top of the hex and then you instantly gain the ability of the feature. I will now explain each of the features one by one. I will start with the saloons. After you place two tracks on the edges of a saloon, you immediately circle one of the four two multipliers in the bottom of your sheet. This means that your hand victory point bonus for that specific round will be doubled. Of course, you can only circle a multiplier of a round which is either the current round or a future round. The next feature is forts. These are activated once you draw tracks in four of the hex's edges. Once you do so, you circle the leftmost available space in the corresponding fort track. At the end of the game, you will gain the victory points depicted on the rightmost circled space. The next feature is gold mines. To activate these, you just need to draw one of their edges. When you do so, you circle one available nugget space on the corresponding track. At the end of the game, you will score one victory point for every circled nugget space, even if these nuggets get crossed out, as we will see in the next feature. The next feature are banks, which work together with nuggets. To activate a bank, you need to draw three of its edges. Once you do so, you can cross out up to four circled nuggets. In this situation, I only have three available nuggets, but I will choose to cross out only two. Then, you go to the leftmost empty bank space in the track and multiply the nuggets you crossed out to the multiplier you see here. So, 2 times 2, 4. And this will be victory points at the end of the game. The next feature is rail yards. They require you to draw three of their edges and then you circle the leftmost available space on the corresponding track. At the end of the game, you count the number of towns connected to your largest network and you multiply this count to the highest circled multiplier. We can see that this network is connected to three towns. If I have no other network that reaches more towns, and this is the situation at the end of the game, then this three will be multiplied to three and I will gain nine victory points. Cattle ranches is the only feature that does not require you to draw an edge. A cattle ranch gets activated once it's separated from any other cattle ranch. As soon as I draw a track here, this cattle ranch becomes separated from all other cattle ranches. This is because the river, mountains, the edge of the map, stations and of course your tracks act as a boundary. When a cattle ranch is activated, you circle the next available space in the corresponding track, depicting the next higher value. At the end of the game, you score the victory points depicted in the circled space with the highest value. Finally, we have towns. Once you reach a town, you cross it out and then you circle the next available town space. At the end of the game, you'll gain one victory point for every town you've reached. However, during your turn, 
you can cross out one or more of your circled towns, even towns that you have just circled, and for each circle you cross out, you place one more track and you also perform one of these five abilities. Let's see these abilities and we'll come back for clarifications. When you use the bridge, you may draw a track over the river. When you use the tunnel, you can draw a track between the two hexes of a mountain range. When you use shortcut, you may draw a track connecting opposite corners of a blank land hex only. With switch, you can create a fork in one of your railways. Finally, with the suit power, you may change the suit of your current card. Important, all of the tracks during your turn will have to be built in the same suit. So you cannot start building on spades and then use this suit power to continue building in another suit. All players start the game with one already circled town space that they can use even on their first turn. Let's make an example. I have selected a hard card so I can draw three hard tracks. My first track goes here, so I circle another one of my town spaces. I can draw two more tracks, but I choose to cross out both of my circled towns, so now I can draw four more tracks, and during the turn I can perform two powers, different or the same one. Of course, since I have already started expanding the heart network, I cannot use the suit power. Placing a track over the river here would spend both of my powers because I'm creating a fork and I'm also creating a bridge. To finish the example, I will choose to create a tunnel here and then expand this railway once, then create a bridge which uses my second power and then place my last track here. Of course, you can forfeit any of your town benefits. At the end of every turn, so after all players have used their selected card, players check if they have accomplished one or more goal cards. To accomplish this card, for example, I need to activate three saloons on my map. I will not explain every single card, but you can pause the video at this moment to check them out. These are fairly straightforward. The first player that has accomplished a goal card gains 10 victory points and circles the corresponding area on their sheet. If multiple players accomplish this goal at the same time, then all of these players score 10 victory points. The rest of the players, however, will cross out the 10 victory points value, meaning that they can still accomplish this goal in the future, but they will only score 5 victory points when they do so. At the end of the round, all players check their poker hand for the round and score victory points. All of these bonuses are also depicted on the left. If you have one pair, you gain one victory point. Two pairs is two victory points. If you have three of a kind, you gain three victory points. If you have a pair and a three of a kind, it's a full house and you score four points. If you have all five different values, it's a straight and you score five victory points. If you have four of a kind, you score six victory points. You write this score in the corresponding star box. However, if the two multiplier is circled, you double this score. After resolving your poker hand, you move to the next round. But if that was the last round, then you move to scoring. In scoring, players add up the total score of all six features, the score from goal cards, their poker hand total score, and the two-point bonus for the third player in the initial player turn order, if applicable. The player with the most victory points wins the game. If there is a tie, then the tied player with the most points from their poker hands wins. If there is still a tie, then all tied players share their victory. The game can be played with any number of players, provided there are enough sheets. In a 5-plus player game, however, you have to use the following alteration. One of the players will be assigned to be the dealer for the entire game. At the beginning of every turn, the dealer will reveal the top card, announce the value and suit of this card, and then discard it. No one can use this card. Then the dealer will deal another two cards 
and all players, including the dealer, will have to use one of these two cards for the turn. Of course, no one takes any of the cards. All players can use the same card. And that were the rules of Pioneer Rails. If you like our videos and want to see more, please subscribe to our channel. And until next time, have fun and play more board games. <music>